Welcome to the Synchronous Technology Webinar, CAD that works in the way designers think. This is brought to you by 3D Technology Limited and Siemens. 3D Technology are, are a, an authorised partner to Siemens in Ireland, based in Galway, Limerick and Dublin. They've got dedicated sales and engineering teams which can provide you with commercial and technical support. They offer Siemens Solid Edge and Siemens NX 3D CAD systems. And they also provide 3D CAD and design services. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you could model the way you think? Be able to edit colleagues' models easily. Have consistent interfaces throughout all the different products. Do concept modeling and add key dimensions later on to drive it to the size it wants to be. Make changes late in the design without the model falling over. And edit other, mo other vendors models possibly quicker than they can. Well, all this can be done using Solid Edge with synchronous technology. Now before we actually look at it, let's just go and have a look at this, this short video. You have an idea, not just any idea, a great idea. An idea for a coffee machine that remembers exactly how you take your coffee. Everyone will want one. You'll be a millionaire. Now to make your dream a reality. But why did designing your product feel like a nightmare? The problem wasn't your idea. The problem was your CAD software. All that planning before you could start designing, it slowed you down. That great part you wanted to add, the one your friend helped you out with, you couldn't work with it, so you had to recreate it from scratch. Oh, and the important change you realized you needed to make at the last minute? No! It's taken all your time, but doesn't look anything like your vision. This is not what you meant to make, because your 3D CAD software didn't let you make it. But Solid Edge from Siemens will. Thanks to Solid Edge's synchronous technology, you'll be able to design as quickly as you think. No worrying about order, no clicking through lots of commands, just draw. You can import files and work with them as if they were your own. And you'll be able to make changes easily at any stage without having to redo anything, which means it'll do exactly what you and your customers want it to. Now that's more like it. Visit Siemens to find out more today. Okay, now let's go and dissect that video and just have a look at what it really means to you. So today what we're going to be looking at, um, you can see here in this agenda, we're going to be looking at creation, then repurposing the data, and then looking at bringing all we've just learned together. And then having a look at some people that have actually done this, and then some, some possible next steps for you. So first of all, let's go and have a look at creation and editing data. We're going to do this with uh, one of our customers' um, models, this Master Mover, and we're going to start from scratch. We're going to do a, um, a bottom-up assembly design. So we've opened this file up. We've got some planes here. Now we're going to start to sketch onto those onto those planes. So we select this this top plane, orient into the view, and then we can pick up, for instance, a circle. We key a dimension in, that dimension is, is placed onto that circle. We're now going to use the radial menu as you saw there to pick the commands we most commonly use. Again, the keyed in dimensions are the dimensions that go onto the model. If we want to place additional dimensions on there, again, that's not a problem and these can be driven to size. So there's nothing really new there compared to what you're used to. However, with Solid Edge, any closed shape forms what we call a region. So either by selecting it individually, or by using a, a fence and selecting everything all together, we're able to select one or more of those regions and then pull it to a predefined size. And you see in here this 34. Unlike other systems, we can now delete the sketch. Ah what would happen? It would probably fall over in other systems. In here, the dimensions jump onto the model and we're able to edit those dimensions 
on the model. Now, what about direct editing? What about just grabbing the ends and pulling it out? Well, it's seen a strong geometric constraint here, this, this symmetrical. But if we don't want that, we can just turn that off and we can just pull it out to the size we want it to be. Key a dimension in, in this case, 50. We're going to place a dimension across the... We're going to place a, uh, a sketch now across a face that we've already got. That included with the rest of the geometry that's there, the 3D model, we're able to place a, a dimension in there and we can put a formula in the bar, as you saw there. Now I'm going to go and place some uh, radiuses onto here. So we just walk around the model and we can place those radiuses through the model if we need to. We're going to place one in the corner here, different size. And now we want to treat some others. So we'll use this um, uh, quick toolbar at the top and we can just put a two on there, find all the fillets and then find all the rounds. So very quickly we've treated all the edges of that, um, of that model. Okay, let's just turn off the uh, the dimensions at this stage. Why have we want to place another one on there? Again, we'll use the radial menu. We'll pick the the um, what we want the dimension. Where do we want the dimension to go? Notice we can select either side, and we'll key that dimension in. So we can place these at any point in the in the design if we've forgotten them, or we're doing concept modeling. If I now want to add some additional geometry in here. This is the, the centre portion of this, so we're going to start to take information away from this. So we're going to use exactly the same commands as we used before, and we're just going to get the key points, i.e. the centre of this, pick a key point on the end of the model, and then we'll create a slot in the end of here. And like we saw before, if we select any of those regions, either individually or all at once using a fence as we see here, we're then able to use our manipulation tool or the, the steering wheel to add or remove material from the model. Now should we want this inside face here to line up with the outside we can put coplanar relationships onto here so we'll put a coplanar relationship between there and there and we can persist it in the toolbar at the top. In this case we're not going to we're just going to use the design intent or synchronous technology to enable us to do that you'll see what happens a bit later. I'm going to place a dimension on key key values that, um, that, that were just digitized as I was creating my concept model but now I know what those sizes want to be I can drive them to the size that I need those, um, those dimensions to be. The design intent will kick in and if it finds coplanar or um, other relationships it will put those in. Notice this dimension here as I place this dimension and make it symmetric, watch what happens on the right hand side. Now we haven't got any um, any relationships tied in here, but what it will do, it will find those strong geometric constraints to see the coplanar faces and it will move those all together. That's synchronous in action. Now let's go and place a hole. We're going to have a look at the hole table here. All of your standard options are there, metric, ANSI and we can decide what fit we want, how far it's going to go through the model and then we can just place that hole onto a face in just the same way as we created those, um, those sketches. So that's been placed in there, we could place all the others individually if we wanted to or we can go in and we can place them using a fence. At any point in time if that hole wanted to change we could go and edit that hole and make a change to it. So there we go, we've put our pattern in. Now at this point in time, if somebody came to you and says, I want to make a design change, you'd probably get a little bit annoyed and you'd probably not be able to cater for it. But with solid edge and synchronous technology, because we ha we're not bound by all the constraints between those, uh, those features and sketches, we're very quickly, we can make that design change in the way in which you would want to do it as a designer. Here we see it being rotated by um, 5 degrees. We'll just finish this off and we'll put um, a, a material on here, in this case cast, and we'll also go and um, pick some features. Okay, we see these features here. These are probably features that you would want to be machined, so you're seeing those machined out of the cast material. Now, unlike other systems, if you were to grab the first feature 
and move it to the bottom of the tree what would happen? It would probably fall over. We're just showing you that just to show you that there's no links between the two and this is the power of synchronous technology. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to save this model away and then I'm going to generate a, um, a 2D drawing from this because in a lot of cases 2D drawings are still the currency of the drawing office and you still need to make sure that you, you generate a drawing of it. So we want to be able to do this very very quickly. Solid Edge caters for that by providing our templates and then just laying views down as needed into that, uh, into that model. If we want to place additional views like a, um, a detail view or a view off of this face here and then uh, perhaps crop that so that we've just got this little bit in here because that's the only piece we're really interested in we can then manipulate it, move it around the screen to wherever we want. So we can create the views. Now I want to um, uh, place dimensions on there. I've just retrieved dimensions. These were the dimensions that we placed onto the model. These um, PMI or manufacturing information that we placed onto the model. We've drawn that through. And if we want to add additional dimensions or in this case centers to it, we can, we can do that just by picking the lines we get the centers between there now if we want to place dimensions on there just on these views we can do that too using our um, smart step ribbon bar so in here we're actually picking dimensions from two dimensions we're picking a dimension from one to the other and then going up the axis and then we're tying all these dimensions together to make these stacked so now as we move those about all of these dimensions will move together. We want to put a, a call out on here. Remember this was a 10.5 through hole. Well it's read that information from the model to determine what that is. Now we can generate section views on here. It's not a problem. But let's have a look at a, um, a, a broken out section view. What's that? Well what we're doing is we're identifying a part and then we're telling it where we want that view to be and you can see this bit that's missing and in the title you can see we've got all the weight and the, um, the, the the name all that has come through into the into the drawing border so very very quickly we've been able to create and edit a model using solid edge with synchronous technology now let's go and have a look at um, how we can repurpose data. See, it's so easy just to recreate it if we're not sure what's going on but how about repurposing something with the tools in Solid Edge it makes it easy to achieve this result. We see these jacks on the right hand side we've got the, uh, the one we want on the left hand side we've got this one here so with Solid Edge we can just pick the faces in this particular case we're going to pick one of these faces and we're going to rotate this around so that it makes it bigger. Notice the design intent coming in and all of the other faces are moved up accordingly. Now what we want to do is um, this bottom face here we don't actually want the bottom of it so we're just going to pull that up we're going to pull it through the model up to a key point in here and now the bottom's disappeared. The same thing applies with these holes through the center of here what we want to do is we want to pick this um, pick this plane in here and just pull it through the model. Notice how it's taken out of all the other um, the other occurrences of that. Now let's have a look at this round. We're using our um, selection tools very quickly we can find all rounds of the same size and just remove those. Now we're going to pick a face on here so we're going to pick this plane and we're just going to move this to the end. Watch what happens to all the other occurrences of this particular part. We place it on the end, they've all moved through. Now I don't want the middle in here. So we can just select this plane and we can start to pull that in and it disappears. We take that out as well. Think how hard this would be if you're doing this with any other CAD system other than Solid Edge. Now we want this to be rounded so we want all of this to be moved so that the, the whole of this is closed up so we're going to pick this face here and then we're going to say well okay what do we want to do with that face 
Well, what I'm intending to do is to move that around to the to the other side. So I want to select my um, uh, my arrow, my uh, manipulation tool, and I'm going to pull it up to a key point at the top to be able to position it. And then I'm going to use the uh, the torus around the outside of it in order to uh, to position it exactly where I where I need it to be. So we'll position this on this key point at the top and then as we rotate the torus notice how it moves through. We'll just turn off the um, uh, the coplanar relationship at the top and you can see now it joins all of those up. So we're getting closer to it but it's still round. We want this to be square. Sorry, it's still square. We want this to be round. Well, we don't want the bottom on here, so we're just going to push that through. And now we want to try and make some legs for this. But before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go through now into the actual part itself. So all that was done at the assembly level. Now we're going to go into the actual part. And if we look at the, um, the hole that we've got in here, we're going to detach that from the model. We'll put it back in in a little while because we're going to make some major changes to these faces. So this round that we've got in here, it's a radius of 4. Well, actually, I want this to be 59, which is the dimension at the top, divided by 2. So we can put that formula in the formula bar. This 75. Again, I want that 75 divided by 2. So we put that in there as well. And then we can place that around the outside all of this so very quickly we've done that now remember the cutout that we had let's just select that cutout and let's just attach it back to the model again easy as that now let's put some rounds on the outside edges of these here let's make those 25 again we'll just walk around the model here and then we'll select the ones on the inside and we'll make these we'll make these 15 say Okay, so they've now been added in there. Now we want some, some cutouts to make this a bit a bit lighter. So what we can do is use the offset command, just pick a pick a face that we want to work on, and then we can select some of the geometry and we'll offset these in this case 20 millimeters from the geometry that we're selecting in here. Give it a direction and it creates us the bits we want. Now I want to create a rib across the bottom of here so I'm just going to make this 40 and I'm going to offset this back one up by 40. So got everything we want. Now solid edge was synchronous, see those closed shapes as regions so we can just select those closed shapes and we can just remove it from the material. Great, done that. Now let's go and have a look at um, just putting a few rounds on here now. So we'll just pick these inside edges, place some rounds in the model, and now we want that to go all around the outside. So by selecting all of those features and then clicking the uh, pattern command, using the steering wheel. Notice we're using the same steering wheel in the part environment that we used in the um, assembly environment. Same tools. And we'll put a count of four so it's put them around the um, around this model. And if we wanted to go back and make a change, we could make a change to the first one. All the others would update. Now we just put a dimension in between these two points and what we want to do is we want to lock that dimension. Now what's that going to do for us? Well, by locking the dimension, that puts a bit of um, intent into the model that says, OK, this wants to stay at 25. Now if we look at the right hand side in the PMI dimensions, we'll see that it's actually described in there as a locked dimension. So we can go in there, we can, we can find it very easily. Now notice that I've changed this to 350 and moved this up that 25 stays in the right location. Again, Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology is the only tool that's going to enable you to do this type of thing. 
coming back to the top level we can see that this other part is still square well that's no great shakes we can go in here we can select our, um, our radiuses in here and we can change those to the 29 that they need to be and we've now got our model now what about if I wanted to change them at the assembly level I can just select all of this geometry manipulate the, um, the steering wheel to where I want it to be and then just drag that up to where it needs to be or I could key a key a dimension in. So we've got control over, over how we manu how we move this thing around and make the changes to it. So repurpose, not recreate. Now we've seen how we can create an edit, we've seen how we can repurpose things. Well, let's go and have a look at some um, some other things that we've got in, in Solid Edge that I think are going to make things a little bit easier for you moving forward. In this particular instance we're going to use both of these together so we're going to use a hybrid of both ordered modeling and synchronous modeling. So what are we doing? Well let's just go in here we can see some of these are created in ordered some of it is created in, in synchronous. Now if I just grab hold of these faces that I want in here and just pull them up they're going to react like a piece of plasticine. So we're able to grab them, move them up by a key dimension, move them to the right by maybe 25 mil or whatever we want to key in here. And we can even rotate these things around. So again, just by um, selecting the correct orientation for the steering wheel, we're able to manipulate these, rotate them around to where they want to be. So the idea is to get this arm to line up with the um, with the rest of the um, the mechanism at the top. So let's just go back to the assembly again and see where we've got to so far. Again, while we're doing this, just think about how you do this if you're using the CAD systems that you're used to. As we move this round, what we want this to do is line up now with this this gold part on here. Now, okay, we're close, but not quite. Let's use solid edge and synchronous. Um, in a hybrid mode if you like and let's, let's just move to the synchronous environment and let's just say right okay what I want to do is I want that face there to be coplanar with the bottom face on this one here not a problem it moves it round for us along with all the other faces associated with it no sketches to comply with here if I now make this and this concentric again not a problem the thing moves and we get that exactly where we want it to be and then all the ordered features follow so we, you can see now how simple that was to create this particular this particular part now if I've got a hole in here and at the assembly level I just do a, a check and I find that's a 0.472 inch hole and what I want to do is I want the one on the bottom to be the same so I can just select that hole and I can just change this to 0.472 and that hole now will change. Remember we've done that at the assembly level. And what happens if somebody comes in here and then decides that they want to alter the tracking of this vehicle? So they select all of this geometry that we've got in here and again using the steering wheel move it to where it wants to go and then they say right it wants to go down by an inch for instance. So they can key in that inch models changed. How would you have done that if you were using anything other than solid edge and synchronous technology? Now we've spoke a lot about um, creating and editing, repurposing and not create, recreating, bringing all the things together but don't just take our word for it. Listen to some people that um, have actually done this AES seals, they've got Solid Edge and, and NX, it's a small to medium business and um, Chris Newton, know very well, by using Solid Edge the time that the designer is taking completing complicated jobs such as designing an intricate helical scroll has been slashed from two days to half an hour. Now how would that impact your business? We've got a um, another another company Hall Engineering who has done a similar sort of thing but he's 
put it into a into a movie so um, let's go and have a look at, at what Hall did now we've seen that in summary we're looking at modeling the way you think be able to edit your colleagues models easier have consistent interfaces throughout we've shown that do your concept modeling and add key dimensions later on we showed you how you could do that make changes late in the in the design without the model falling apart we showed that and edit other vendors models as if they were your own so everything you've seen so far in here that could equally well have been something that came in from a, a third party so pretty much we've answered those questions if you want to learn any more on this there's um, 2D to 3D and data migration on the 20th of September and this will show you how you can work in 2D and evolve to 3D as the uh, as the need arises and we'll also be looking at some data migration techniques that we've got in Solid Edge which again is um, uh, proprietary to, uh, to Siemens so hopefully we'll see you on another webinar Thank you very much. Trophy truck racing is the highest level of the off-road sport. It is the unlimited class, pretty much anything goes, and they're some of the fastest vehicles out there. I'm Craig Hall with Hall Designs. I design race car components for many builders in the race car off-road industry. So they'll give me a rough idea or outline of what they're looking for. And meeting the deadline for the first race of the year is your number one goal. You have anywhere from six to ten weeks between racing events. And if there are revision changes, you need those done immediately. It could take up to three to four weeks to fabricate the components themselves. The overall process you know, starts with that initial CAD design. With Solid Edge, you're able to provide the customer with a 3D model, the chassis moving, suspension moving, being able to draw those parts in three dimensions, to be able to view it and rotate it and get a real-time view of what the part will look like without the customer having to spend any money to get a prototype part. So you can find out where parts will touch to be able to update, revise, and make those changes with Solid Edge is, is huge to have that finished part done in time for that next event. I started Hall Designs in late 2013. The step to go out on my own was, was definitely scary. It's something I've never done. I've always been an employee of a business with a you know, guaranteed income. Solid Edge for me was definitely the program I was going to use. They had just come out with their subscription-based licensing, and that for me was kind of a no-brainer with limited funding to purchase anything to start the business. Before being able to use synchronous technology, you'd need to redraw vendors' CAD files. It could take from an hour to a couple hours to reconfigure a shock to how you need it. What's great about synchronous technology is I'm able to import and directly edit vendors' files and adjust them and make changes within seconds. And you can cut down the, the time by you know hundreds of hours, whether it's a normal day at work or you know a 10, 12 hour day. I want to get that done at work so I can separate my work life from my home life. And solid edge, I'm able to do that. I raced the Baja 1000 a few times, and in 2012, we end up winning that race. So to finish is, is huge, but to win it as a driver and the designer of the car, I don't think I could top it.